Your Royal Highness, Sir John Parker, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, I'm extremely pleased to be addressing you tonight. Engineering is a fascinating discipline, and the power station, as the Chancellor mentioned today, is clearly a fitting venue tonight. It uh, represents change, showcasing how engineering helps us to adapt to ever-changing needs. And the goal here is to make what was fit for purpose yesterday fit for purpose tomorrow. It's interesting to note that Atkins was founded just three years after Battersea Power Station was completed, and that our founder, Sir William Atkins, had worked on the design of the station in the late 20s. I'd like to think that it was working on this tremendous site that inspired him to form Atkins in the first place. Let's hope our young engineers in the audience tonight must have similar inspirations. Like this building, as Atkins, we have changed over the last 75 years. From the tools we use to the projects we are tackling. You may have seen the model of the ITER nuclear fusion reactor on your way in. It offers the potential of limitless sustainable power, a replication of the way the sun and stars create energy. In the middle of this fusion reactor, there are going to be 150 million degrees centigrade that has to have to be managed. So if you think it's hot here today, Come and visit us in 2018 in the southern part of France. This is the future being delivered by scientists and engineers, including Atkins, now, today, as we speak. It really is a cutting-edge project where the physical structures are being designed at the same time that the science is evolving. It's a project where innovation is not an add-on, it is an absolute necessity, and our engineers are passionate about it. We are increasingly being faced with this sort of challenge because the world is becoming a much more complex place. Take urbanization, a trend that is happening at a breakneck space at the moment. Today, more than half of the world's population is living in urban centers. In 2015, it will be 75% of the world population. And this development is happening in the developing world, not here at home or in the US or in continental Europe. Just as another example, 19 Brazilian cities have doubled in population in the last decade alone. Take energy as another example. Power production by the end of the century may need to be three times what it is today. While the headlines are dominated by concerns over energy and CO2, water is just as important. Already 80% of the world's population exists in areas where a high threat to water exists today. As populations concentrate, this risk increases. Clearly, there is an important link between growth and infrastructure, both in the developed and in the developing world. The Chancellor has championed the role of infrastructure in boosting the domestic economy and rightfully so. We've seen the public sectors backing for high speed two, crossrail, the extension of the Northern Line, as the Chancellor pointed out, to join up to the underground of this power station here. There's no doubt our industry is helping to bring growth. But this isn't our only focus. It's also about maintaining a truly holistic approach to building a sustainable future. When this power station was built, there were two billion people on Earth. 
Today, it's 7 billion. This figure could reach 10 billion by the end of the century. This exponential growth of the world's population is the biggest challenge the planet has ever faced. It is our responsibility as engineers to meet these challenges. Doing that will require innovation on a worldwide scale, applied in a concerted way. It will also need us to develop the natural, natural abilities of our people. As while technology helps, we will not succeed without human ingenuity. Sir John Parker talked about the need to encourage more young people in our profession. This is vital, as we need to build our talent base and we need to create a conveyor belt of fresh ideas. Equally, we need to be persuasive in convincing investors, private investors, private money to back critical infrastructure projects and demonstrating their trust was well placed by delivering with efficiency. In short, we must be in a position where we can shape our future. Let me finish on a quote from Thomas Edison. The determination he showed in perfecting his inventions is legion, and he was also a very talented entrepreneur. He said, vision without execution is hallucination. Tonight, as I look around in this room, I see the calm confidence of engineers and the commitment to getting it done. I see the people with the ideas that will help to shape our future, specifically the young generation here in the EU. We have a world-class institution with the Royal Academy that is showing leadership, harnessing talent and doing it with a passion that drives us as engineers to succeed. It is a pleasure and a privilege for Atkins to be part of this proud heritage. Thank you very much.